Hey everybody, welcome back! If you're new here, my name is Amy. I'm a witch, a spiritual guide, and an energy healer. And if you're not new here, you might notice I pointed with myself with only one finger this time. Switching it up! Welcome back! If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you think somebody else would also like this video, share it with them and they can give it a thumbs up and then I'll have two. And that would be awesome. It really helps me out. If you haven't already subscribed, hit that little bell button so you always know when my new videos come out. Okay, today we're gonna to talk about divination using a pendulum. Um, if you guys are not new here, you probably already know that I love divination. I love divination as an empath and as a psychic. I, it's just, it's something that I've always identified with. Um, I experienced a lot of really strange things as a child and growing up and even now, and divination is a really good, solid way to get a clear look at what's actually happening around you. So I want to give you the tools to do divination with a pendulum today. The first thing I would like to mention is this book. This book, Pendulum Magic by, um, by the person DJ Conway. Okay, so there are a lot of books on pendulum magic, kind of like there's a lot of books on all types of magic, but this book is very comprehensive and it's short. It's small, it's sweet, it gets to the point. Highly recommend. I always like to have reference books for things, even if I don't read the whole thing, or if I completely disagree with it. I just think having a reference book is just, it's crucial. It's important. Really sorry about the lighting, you guys. It's a whole thing. It's a whole thing. So, <clears throat> get yourself a pendulum book if you're interested. Learn about the types of things you can ask a pendulum. Learn about, there's also a lot of really good graphs and things in there, so you can attune your pendulum to the graph and then you can use it to pick out specific things instead of just yes and no's. Today we're going to talk about yeses and no's, but like I said, if you draw like charts and graphs and stuff for your pendulum, your pendulum can actually pick out very specific answers for you. It would be super, super useful once you've got the practice in, so I highly recommend find a pendulum, get some practice in, read a book, do some studying, it's a good time. So if you just want yeses and nos, you want answers to specific questions, and using a pendulum is a really, it's a very quick, accurate way to do it. First thing, obviously, that you need is a pendulum. I have mine here. Isn't it pretty? I got it at a shop. Um, it was around $30. You can get them for much cheaper. Other places, I just like supporting local businesses, and I felt like it was something that was worth spending the money on. You want to pick one that resonates with you. If you guys want a video on how to pick your tools or how to get your tools, let me know and uh, like leave it in the comment area and I'll, I'll work on that. Um, once you have a pendulum, there are some things that you need to understand about your pendulum and that is that various things can control it. So, for example, the pendulum itself, once it bonds to you, is in tune with you and your higher self, but it also has a connection to spirit, universe, and everything that is energy around you. So, anything really could influence your pendulum if you're not careful. Entities that mean you harm can influence your pendulum. Um, entities with malintent and also entities that are not specifically the one that you're asking for. So for example, if you want to speak to a loved one, you want answers from a loved one or for a loved one specifically that has somebody that has passed on um, or a spirit, say maybe you have a spirit living in your home and you want to speak with them, something that is not that loved one or that spirit could influence your pendulum and say, 
that they are that person or that entity. So it's really important, first of all, that you have really good psychic protection before you use a pendulum for divination and always cast a circle and stay inside of it and don't break it while you're using a pendulum just like you would any other type of magic because you don't want any sort of outside interference whatsoever. You only want the pendulum to get the answers from directly from source and from your higher self and I guarantee that those are going to be the answers that are the purest and that don't mean you harm and so you can trust that they are what you need to hear at the time. If you ever get an answer from your pendulum and you're like, that doesn't feel right, then I highly suggest like reevaluating your situation. Um, if it's something where you're like, I don't want to accept that, and then the next day you're like, okay, I really need to work on this, then that's one thing. But if you get an answer that just doesn't resonate with you, or if you start feeling things about the pendulum or your pendulum working that like just don't feel right or safe or like sideways for any reason, then you just stop. <laughs> Stop, reevaluate your situation and your pendulum, cleanse the thing, make sure your circle is safe, cleanse your house. Like, don't just keep going and inviting entities that you don't know or know how to deal with <laughs> to like access you via your pendulum. Uh, pendulum is a lot like a Ouija board in that it can be a medium for you to channel answers and information from spirits. The difference between a pendulum and a Ouija board is that you can actually control how that goes a little bit and you can shut it down. So Ouija boards, girl, if you guys want my opinion on Ouija boards, leave a comment down below because I'm not going to get into it right now. It's a whole thing. It's a whole thing. How I feel about Ouija boards. Um, your pendulum can be used in a safe environment. It can be used safely, and it's important that it is. So you always wanna cleanse it. You always wanna put a circle up, and you don't want to ask <laughs> specific entities to answer you, unless it is one of your guardians, it's one of your angels, or it's one of your spirit guides or something like that. Getting information from a spirit guide is fine. Trying to get information from a spirit um, can be fine, but it can also be really, really detrimental. So don't do it unless you're a professional, and I really, really mean that. I really do. I really, really do. Okay, so how do you get answers from a pendulum? You need to bond with it. Once you've bonded with it, you're ready to go. This is what you do. You teach your pendulum which direction to go, first of all. Clockwise usually means yes. Counterclockwise often means no. And if it's just kind of like chilling like this, or it's not really sure which direction it's going in, that's usually a neutral thinking position. It either doesn't know the answer, the answer's not clear, or it needs some time to think about it, or you haven't asked the question yet. Um, forward and backward can also mean yes, and side to side can also mean no. So again, you need to be in tune with your pendulum and make sure that you both agree on what yes and no is. The way to do that is to hold your pendulum up like this over your hand, and when it moves a certain direction, in your mind you want to think, see how it's moving back and forth? In your mind you want to think, this means yes. And you really want to imbue your pendulum with the feeling of yes while it's moving back and forth. Likewise, do that when it goes clockwise, do it when it goes counterclockwise for yes and no. And you want to make sure that you assign different values to your pendulum based on where it's moving. So you can't say that forward and backward means yes and forward and backward means no. That isn't going to work, you guys. Forward and backward means yes and side to side means no is fine. If you decide that side to side means feels more like yes to you and forward and backward means feels more like no, that's also fine, but you need to be very clear about it and you have to define it and you have to make sure that your pendulum agrees. Once you've got that sorted, you can ask your question. It needs to be very pointed. It needs to be something that you can get a yes or no answer to. And then you, you, think, you think your question to the pendulum. You focus all of your energy on it and then let it move. You just wait. And if you'll notice, my hand isn't moving. My pendulum is moving all on its own. 
Oops. <laughs> I do do that, it kind of messes it up. But the idea is the energy comes completely from your higher self, from source, from the earth, from the energy around you. And your pendulum is merely a conduit to the answer that you really already have access to via your higher self and your guides. So, whatever it is I'm asking, my pendulum is saying no. I think that means this video is done. Thank you so much for being here, you guys. Add me on Instagram if you haven't already. DM me with questions. Put questions in the comment box down below. Consider supporting me on Patreon so I can make more videos for you guys. Have a blessed and beautiful day.